Hey everybody, uh, today we're gonna be installing a hybrid hot water heat pump. Hybrid means that it runs off of electricity as well as utilizes refrigerant gas and a compressor to extract heat from the air that surrounds it. So we're gonna be installing this and replacing a hot water boiler that has been traditionally used in this home that we just purchased. Many people have a boiler type system just like this in their home. So I'm going to show you how we go about not just installing the hybrid hot water heater, but how we bypass the existing pump. So uh, the first thing that we really need to know is kind of uh, have a general understanding of what we've got. In this case, we've got uh, an a tank over here that holds the hot water from the boiler and in order to disconnect this we needed to understand what was coming into it and out of it. Almost all of these, they call this an indirect hot water heater but it's basically a storage tank. Almost all of these are going to be pretty similar. So what we've got here, you can clearly see this one is marked, a cold supply line. This is actually coming from my you know, cold water. And then we've got the hot water that comes out of the tank. So this is supplying the house um, with hot water. Um, so how it works is cold water comes into this unit and circulates through a coil inside um, and then comes out with hot water. And then over here, what we've got is the actual, there's a hot water um, coil that comes off of the boiler and goes into the tank. It's separate from this coil but it, what it does is it heats up this water in the tank in the same circulating um, cir circulation. And see, it has a circulator pump in here that actually circulates the water. So we need to obviously just connect all of this. Um, you know, alternatively, if if you wanted to keep this as a backup unit, you could just in, you could cut all these lines um, and install shutoff valves for them if you really wanted to. Um, but in my case, I, I don't intend on keeping it. I'm just going to get rid of it. So what has to happen in order to get rid of this unit is I'm going to trace my lines. In this case, I use PEX. A lot of you will just have copper up to the main lines, which is right over here. And I'm going to cut them and I'm just going to cap them off. So that way this is able to be removed. And the same thing here, I'm going to turn off my valve that comes off of my boiler on both sides. This is a, one is a supply and one is a return. Again, they're clearly marked. Um, and I'm just going to shut those off and then I will cap those off. Then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the electronic um, leads um, that go to the thermostat in here. Because if not, as the water starts to drop, the thermostat's gonna uh, kick the boiler on and of course, I don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and I'll disconnect those leads and then I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna um, open up this box and disconnect those in here. And that's basically it to getting rid of this indirect hot water heater. So that's all you have to do to get rid of that. If you wanted to keep this as a backup again, you would just take these two cold and hot water supply valves, or, sorry, hot, cold and hot water lines and you would want to install a shutoff somewhere in here, um, probably up by the main line. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because you wouldn't want a hot water, the hot water heater that you're installing to be circulating water through here. It would just be uh, a waste. Um, and then if you wanted to have it for a backup, you would just be able to flip it back on. You'd obviously need to disconnect your leads over here. Um, you, I guess you could put a switch in those, but I, if, if I were going to keep this as a backup, I would just disconnect them. And then when I wanted to use it, all I'd have to do is flip my valves and um, I'd be able to plug this back in and everything should fire right back up. But in this case, I'm not keeping it, but that's how you would keep it if you wanted to. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to install and what we're going to do first. So I've got a well pump because we have a well here. Um, if not, you're going to have um, you know city water that'll be coming in. You just want to track your cold water line. I know this is my cold water line because it comes right out of my tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into the cold water line so you can see it right here. And I'm going to tee off of it and run a cold water supply line over to my tank, which comes right off the top. Okay. And then I'm going to do, run a hot water line right off of here. 
and it's going to again connect into my hot water line um, which is right beside my cold water line so again I'll tee off next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to install a an expansion tank which I have right here and um, we'll be doing all this together but we're going to install an expansion tank up here on our cold water supply line and having that expansion tank will allow me to protect the system um, from overpressurizing as the hot water heats up. So we're gonna do all of that first. Um, we're gonna install a, this is a pressure relief valve. We're gonna install a line that's gonna go about six inches above the ground. So if this thing does become overpressurized for any reason, it will blow all the hot water down uh, towards the bottom. Um, that's why if you were installing this in an area that you were afraid of it getting wet, you would want to make sure that you had some type of pan. In this case, I'm in a, a concrete basement, so I'm not concerned about it. Um, but that's only in the event of failure. These things also have a condensate valve. So um, this thing produces condensation um, as it uh, dehumidifies the air um, because it's drawing air in from the room. Okay, so um, yeah, we're going to have to install a, a drain line here that is going to go, in my case, over here to the ground, which will hook into um, my home's drainage system. If you didn't have that, you could also install it, obviously, into a floor drain if you had that. Um, if you have absolutely nothing, um, you'd have to have a drain pan here on, underneath with a, with a tube. Um, and you, it would come out of that tube um, and into a pump. And they have these, they call them condensate pumps. Um, I've used them before and, and they work well. And what happens is as they fill up, it will just kick on just like a sump pump would and it'll pump it out to wherever you want it. And you could hook it into a drain or out a window or whatever. Um, that's your other option. So this is a Bradford White pump. Um, Bradford White is what I chose to go with. Um, they had a great price. Uh, they were cheaper than A.O. Smith, um, and the specs were nearly identical. The other reason I didn't go with A.O. Smith is because A.O. Smith has the hot water and cold water lines come out on each side. This one has them come out of the top, and that allows them to be, um, you know, just, I think, it, a little bit cleaner installation, and obviously it would work better for smaller spaces as well. So that's why I chose this Bradford White um, water heater instead. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and um, talk about what we're going to do first. We're going to go ahead and um, we're going to open up and uh, get all these um, water connections installed, just like we said. I'm not going to actually show every single one of those connections because we'll just talk through it here in a minute and it'll make the video go a little bit quicker. But I just basically gave you an explanation of what I'm going to do for the water hookup. Um, and then after that, we'll go over the electrical hookup. All right, guys, we're back and we've got uh, most of our plumbing done. So I thought I'd update you guys real quick. So here's what we got going on. Again, this is the cold water side. This is a three quarter inch fitting coming out of the top. It's pretty standard. I use PEX. So with PEX, if you're unfamiliar with it, you can just research it. PEX is this piping. It's very easy to work with, a lot easier than dealing um, with copper. Um, no soldering required, you just clamp them down. So, uh, following our cold water line, I connected here used a using a PEX connector, ran three quarter inch water line because uh, that's what the um, unit called for. I decided to put in an expansion tank. Again, that's on the cold water side. Uh, the reason why I decided to put that expansion tank in is one, the manufacturer recommended it. Uh, most of these units require it now because um, most houses are built now with a backflow device, which, which means um, it won't allow the, the backflow device on the home won't allow water to back up into the cold water side. So what happens is when this heats up, water expands. When it expands, it needs some place to go. And if you have, usually, if you didn't have a backflow preventer on your home, then it would back up into the cold water pipes. Um, yeah, since you most likely do have a, a um, backflow preventer, what will happen is it'll over, over pressurize the tank and it'll start dripping from your pressure relief valve. So in order to avoid that, just spend the extra 20 bucks and put in the expansion tank. So I installed an expansion tank. You can see it's a half inch fitting on top. 
not really that complicated. This is again right on the water supply, cold water supply. I put a shutoff valve here. I also put one on the hot water side, so that way if I ever need to service this or change the tank, I can just shut it off, unscrew and screw a new one in. Um, I connect it in over here to my um, cold water supply. Um, there's water kind of everywhere right now because I had to cut into the, uh, the piping. Um, and again, I cut into the, and teed off of the hot water side. So what will happen is the cold water will come in here, it'll go over to the unit, it'll come up and into my hot water line and feed into the main hot water feed for the house. Now, because I had a boiler, I told you I was going to get rid of it. Again, there's kind of water everywhere because I cut the lines open over here. But you can see all I did was cut the hot water line that was coming out of my, my, um, ex my tank over here, my indirect water heater, and I capped it, put a clamp on it. And I did the same thing with my cold water. Not that hard. I shut off my valves, which went into uh, to heat my hot water from my boiler. I shut that off, I cut my line off. I'm going to also cap that as well. So if anybody ever opens it, there would be no risk of them getting injured from hot water. Again, same thing, I'll be capping this here in just a minute. Cut off my lines off my indirect water tank. Disconnected my um, thermostat. And in just here in a minute, I'm going to um, shut the power off and I'm going to disconnect the power wire that powers the circulator pump on this. And this unit will be completely disconnected. I'm gonna wait for it to cool down, hook a drain hose onto it and drain all the water out of this and we'll get rid of this tank. And that's really um, all there is to it. What we have left to do over here is um, I have to install a 90 degree elbow to drain the condensation and I'm just going to run it down here onto the floor and over to my drainage pipes. Um, the last thing that I have to do, of course, is wire it up. Um, so I'm about 30 feet from my breaker box that's over there. Since I'm running a copper wire, this unit draws 30 amps. So for a copper wire at a 30 feet for a 30 amp draw, I need a uh, 10 gauge wire. So I'm running a 10 gauge wire. Of course, I'm gonna have two positives and a ground because this unit requires 220. So I'll show you exactly how that's all done here in just a minute when I open everything up. But again, as long as you're using a copper wire for a 30 amp um, and you're a pretty similar distance, uh, you, you should be able to safely utilize a 10-2 wire, interior wire. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with um, the electrical. We'll finish up this plumbing and we'll be back. All right guys, so we get the electrical panel opened up here. Went ahead and ran my wire. Um, it's not quite pretty up yet, but uh, this is just to show you what you need to do. So you have a 30 amp double pulled breaker. Now the breaker is going to vary depending on what your box is. So go and look at the other breakers and find out what type of breaker you have. You, you might have a GE, it might be a square D. Um, in this case, um, I've got an Eaton. Um, uh, 30 amp breaker. So again, you need a 30 amp double pulled breaker. The reason for that is because the hot water heaters require 220. So in this case, what I did was I had obviously three wires, um, two being the power wires and then my ground. Again, this is a 10-2 wire. Okay, so both of these are gonna be power. It doesn't matter which one you connect, doesn't matter at all in any order. Both of these are power. So your white and your black both go into the side of your breaker. Your ground goes into your ground uh, lugs. And then obviously you just clamp this in here, just like so. I'm not gonna do it because I haven't hooked up the hot water heater yet, but it just pushes in. And then obviously you just close your box back up. So I ran my wire across, up and over. And then we'll go ahead and uh, finish up, disconnect, but we'll finish connecting this up here in just a minute. So all we're going to do is cut this. We're going to connect our white wire and our black wire. So the white wire will go to your, your red wire in this case because again these, these are going to both be your powers. Your black and your red are going to be power wires. doesn't matter which one you hook to which. But those are your two power wires. This is going to be your ground. 
So I've got compression fittings here. A compression fitting is made to fit into this hole and that prevents the wires from chafing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this panel off. We're gonna run our wires into here. We're gonna connect them um, and screw down our compression fitting. So that way these wires are safe and secure and then we'll connect them all up. That's all we're gonna do. All right guys, we get our power hooked up um, and I'll show you that, but right now we're in test mode. Um, I literally just flipped the switch, in, switch on. And so this is what you'll see when you flip your switch on. Um, prior to turning this unit on, you need to fill it with water. Oh, and I just heard the unit kick right on. Perfect. You can probably hear the fan running in the background. It's actually pretty quiet. So according to the instruct manual um, that I read, you need to have a minimum of seven inches on the back. So I want to make sure you give yourself enough space, and that's because this fan needs room to circulate the air. It draws the air from up top here, so you'll be all set there. Um, but uh, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that. This is the compression fitting I was talking about. I just want to make sure that that's completely closed off. You want to do that on your electrical panel as well. Um, that's really all there is to it. I, I mean, honestly, I think it took me maybe two hours to do this entire installation and I saved myself um, at least a $1,000. Um, just so you know, this is uh, Bradford White and um, here is the model number uh, RE2H50S10-1NCWT. Um, this is a 50 gallon tank just so you know which model I installed but again all of them should be the same so um, that's really all there is to it guys um, thank you very much for watching if you have any questions please uh, drop them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them also if you like this video please like the video and click subscribe that would be certainly a big help for me thanks a lot have a good day